The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. Yes, it can seem rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, and it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance, from the quality of your inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. Here on the Christine Uptrich Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Are you ready to step into your vibration of change? Hello, everybody. Welcome. You might be listening live on 1150 AM KKNW in the Seattle area or on TransformationTalkRadio.com anywhere around the world. Or perhaps you're watching on Facebook Live. You can find us on Facebook Live on my professional page or on Transformation Talk Radio's um, page as well. You might be listening after the fact on my YouTube channel. And uh, we're starting to get videos up to the YouTube channel. So please find us over there too. Uh, But wherever and whenever you're you're joining us from today, very grateful to have you here. Uh, And I'm, I'm playing a bit of Russian roulette because I've got cats in the room. So we shall see. It seems that one of them is already trying to join us. Um, good morning, Benny. You're there in Seattle. Uh, hi, How are you? Hi, Christine. Doing very well. Have you uh, thawed out from last weekend and or is your snow cat still standing? Well, I never did make a snow cat. Ah, um, I was hoping. You know, I've, I've, got, I've got three cats, so right. I don't really need another. Oh, okay. You know, good. A fourth is really like good going point. from... Uh, somebody with pets to a crazy cat lady. Yeah. So, <laughs> You're not even close it. to that. Not even close. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, we've still got some snow on the ground, yeah. but the roads are clear, which Excellent. is good. That's what we want to hear. And uh, we live on a private road uh, down an old, you know, it's a gravel road. And there are about a dozen houses on this road. And fortunately, one of our neighbors uh, inherited a tractor. And so oh. he came and cleared our our uh, road which was so nice oh that was very extremely nice for someone to do that yeah very neighborly um and it's uh yeah it's been kind of crazy but you know at least it wasn't the 28 inches we had a couple years ago right that was a freakish thing we had so yeah it was thank goodness it was and good morning olivia there at ttr how are you i'm doing well christine and i personally am of the opinion that you can't ever have too many cats so but that's just me maybe (laughs) That's one reason why I like you. <laughs> I hear that's a proposal for cat sitting then maybe one day uh, for you, Christine. I think Olivia's offered. <laughs> well, I think she's got kitties of her own. She's got pets of her own. Okay. All yeah. right. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Um, we're having Pat Alva Craker on, and she was born and raised in El Paso, Texas. She lives in Fort Worth, uh, Indy. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, she now resides in Fort Worth, and, and she's got um, a husband she's been married to for three years. We're going to hear a little bit about her journey. And she's got a dog, Dakota. So, you know, we're, we're talking to another pet person. She has a bachelor's degree in business administration from the University of Texas and certifications in project management and coaching. After a 35 career in the IT industry, Pat Alva Craker was faced with a series of challenges that altered her professional life forever. She was let go from a major technology company. Her husband of 22 years um, suddenly passed away. They shared 200 acre exotic animal ranch then she had to close its doors. Uh, She's also a breast cancer survivor. And so she really knows what it takes to uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, so to speak. I'd like to welcome our guest today, author of Catherine's Quests, One Woman's Journey to Elation, Pat Alva Craker. Hi, Pat. Hi, Christine. What a pleasure it is to be here with you. It's nice to have you here. And I always appreciate how um, people face challenges and make their way through because not everybody's so fortunate. For some, they go deeper and deeper and deeper into that hole of feeling victimized, of feeling as though they, um, you know, that, that they, they can't really manifest joy again. But your book and your own personal journey 
says otherwise. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the dark nights of your soul and how you found your way out. Yeah, so I, I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I uh, certainly believe that, um, that we're all on a sacred path and that mm -hmm. the situations and events that happen in our, our lives are for a reason. So the three that were really powerful that were life changing were uh, the, the breast ca um, breast cancer, learning that I had breast cancer uh -huh. in, in my forties, and um, it was really a um, time to stop and take a pause. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Yeah. What I and you have no choice at that point, right? Because I mean, you're just like, okay, it's here, right? What am yeah. I going to do? Right? Am I going yeah. to crawl up in bed and die, or am I going to um, take control and responsibility of my own health? Uh -huh. And you and I share a path when it comes to cancer. And um, mm -hmm. I did go down the traditional path and then went into uh, an alternative medicine. You know, I decided that I had to take responsibility. I just couldn't rely on the doctors and turn over my power to doctors huh. and let and rely on them to heal me. Uh -huh. So I took responsibility for that from a mind, body and soul perspective. It was a time where I not only took a pause with what's going on in my life, um, what is happening with my career, and how am I spending my time? Mm -hmm. Because what I've learned about breast cancer and, and studying Louise Hayes is that breast cancer is associated with overgiving mm. and just lack of self-care and just giving to the family, right. to work, to the community. And that was me. I was absolutely overgiving. Mm -hmm. and uh, decided really to go within and find a different way of living and take responsibility and say, you know what, I'm going to come out on the, on the other side, a wiser, stronger woman. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it a step at a time. Yeah. And, and I think it's in. really important for um, everybody who's listening that we, you know, t to underscore though, each of us has our own journey about how we approach health crises mm -hmm. and, some people choose completely holistic. Um, some people choose a mix of holistic conventional. Some people are just like down that conventional path. And I really think that it, what's important is that it's in alignment with mm -hmm. what feels right to us. Mm -hmm. Not just like what somebody says we're supposed to be doing, but instead like this feels right. And Bernie Siegel, who wrote Love, Medicine, yes. and Miracles, yes. he's this amazing man who is a surgeon, you know, by training, and he was a surgeon for many years, but he also underscores that it's really about being in alignment with yourself mm -hmm. and, and whatever that means on your journey to healing. So it sounds to me, Pat, like you decided that um, you take the conventional path, but that that wasn't enough for you because your soul was calling in this situation. Yes. I absolutely, uh, I, in one way, Christine, I feel like the, the cancer was a catalyst for me to actually open myself up and embrace alternative medicine. Because uh -huh. in that process, I learned essential oils, I learned healing with foods, I became a Reiki master, uh -huh. I learned polarity, and I became a healer, which was never an intent, right? It was never right. in my space um, to go down that path. But uh, source, you know, I had a different plan. And this was one of the lessons, one of the doors that was opened uh, mm -hmm. because of it. And I, I embraced it and I went down that path. And um, you never know what's on the other side of the door. Yes. Just and like sometimes we choose to walk through that door and other times we're like pushed through it, kicking <laughs> and screaming. <me. laughs> and health crises can, can be the pushing you know, thing that yeah. the, the, the kick in the pants to look at life. Um, for me, when I was facing lymphoma, yeah, it was early stages and doctors had absolutely nothing to offer at that stage. And ultimately they, for this type of cancer, they put you on chemotherapy the rest of your life. So um, I had the time and the space to say, I can't use conventional medicine right now. I'm going to do anything and everything besides that found my way to Louise Hay and, and yeah, several other, you know, mm -hmm. books and teachers, including Bernie Siegel, who, who I, I mentioned before. Um, and for me, I, I kind of wonder at that point in my life, I probably would have chosen some conventional um, therapy as well, just because it's such a, um, such a difficult thing to, to face and have to make that choice. Like, do you, do you do what 
we're sort of programmed to believe in so that we can let go of the fear of doing it wrong or mm -hmm. do we just take that path of, of alternative medicine now I think I'd make a, a different choice, but it's hard to know if it's something that required surgery, you know, I might just get that surgery. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's so, and it, and I think that we can't judge another person's path. Um, but it is a shame when people don't take the health crisis to be a wake up call, mm -hmm. uh, a, a moment of inflection, a year of inflection, whatever it is, because mm -hmm. it is a great opportunity, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is a great opportunity. And, you know, I feel that in my journey, there were there were signs along the way that um, they were telling me it's time to really, you know, take put yourself number one and okay. do self care. Don't don't let it become a crisis before I have to remind you, Pat, that you are not taking care of yourself. Yeah. And when we're very aware of our lives and we're tuning in, we start hearing those messages and we can avoid a crisis if we just connect with our body and we're aware of what's happening uh -huh. and we take time to meditate or journal and just see what's happening within so that as that transformation is occurring, as that wake up call is happening, that you can listen to it before mm -hmm. it becomes a crisis like it did for me. Right. So people talk a lot about self-care and I think sometimes people think, Oh, it's, you know, taking the candlelit bath. Um, it's going for a walk for you. What did the lack of self-care look like and how did you shift that? Right. So the lack of self-care was really taking care of everybody else but myself. It was traveling 80% of the time. And then wow. when I was home, helping my, my husband with the exotic animal ranch, and it was burning the candles on both ends, mm -hmm. not really uh, just feeling overwhelmed and tired of being tired uh -huh. is what it felt like. Yeah. And I felt like I was rushing through life. I just, you know, it was just one day after the next. What do I need to do today? And there was, the, there wasn't this level of peace that I wanted. Uh -huh. And you know, having an opportunity to really sit back and say, what is self-care? For me, it's a, it's a mind, body, and soul adventure. It's a mind, body, and soul activities that you practice every day to bring that level of wholeness, peace, being grounded and centered so that when you're living life, you're living life from this space of a contentment and you're responding to life versus reacting. Oh, I love that. I love that. Two things that, that I really appreciate. You said self-care is an adventure. I love the fact that you used that word. And the other thing is um, the, the thing that I just mentioned a moment Respond ago. Respond versus react. Yeah, res responding instead of reacting. Because the reactivity and the reacting to life as though we need to push back or we need to like, you know, it, it's, it's almost like getting the messages on our phones, like it, instead of focusing on what it is we're doing and moving forward, it's like, okay, we need to respond to this. We need to respond to that because it, it makes us um, not the ones in control, so to speak in, right. in that respect. Um, right. We, we are not in power. We're not coming from a point of power and we're letting outside, so outside, outside sources drive our activity and our emotions and our feelings yeah. and decisions. Right, right. And that, in that situation, it can end up making us feel either overwhelmed or exhausted, like you said you were. Um, but it can also make us feel like we're victims mm -hmm. because we're not in our power of saying yes or no to whatever it is. We are instead um, kind of like the martyrs of our life, you know, yeah. and, and, and showing up too much for others and not enough for ourselves. So one of the things you talk about is um, being a leader in your own life. I love that concept. Can you share a little bit more with our, our viewers about this? Right. Um, I think, you know, when we're successful in life and in business, the ultimate foundation of your success in those two areas be, is really how you lead yourself into life, how mm. you lead 
and make decisions so that you're in a better place to lead a team, lead a business, to grow, lead a family. Uh And it becomes one of being fully present and connecting with your higher self, source, God, Buddha, greater something, whatever that is for you. Because in leading ourselves, we are never alone through that process. Mm. We are never alone. We're always being told the next best step. It's whether we're listening or not. And so a leader who self-leads takes the time to know that the answers really are all here. Mm. And we can ask for the answer, be fully present, and know that you're always at choice. I love that. To whatever is in your highest interest. When you were first diagnosed, did you feel alone? I did. It was way back in the 40s. I was was in my 40s. And at that time, um, cancer wasn't really talked about like it is today. It wasn't Mm. as prevalent. So I I went into a cocoon uh, when it came to cancer. And I really took a step back and really didn't, you know, really participate with my team like I could have. I just really stepped back and, and... was um, I I saw other people around me who had cancer and just kind of step back and, you know, kind of exit life. And Mm -hmm. not like it is today. I mean, if you have cancer, you say cancer and everybody jumps in and hugs in. There's all these resources. And it was totally different when I was going through my experience. It's like, Mm -hmm. we don't want to talk about it. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because um, I've heard, I, I know somebody who, who got, um, was diagnosed with COVID mm-hmm. and, um, I think it's debatable about whether it's really truly identified or not, but it's, there's a virus there. And, um, she was trying to figure out, does she keep it quiet? Mm-hmm. Because there's this stigma attached if you get ill, like really, really? Yeah. And, and, uh, but she was making the choice. She said, I think I'm going to talk about it because it, yeah, she didn't feel well for, you know, a good week. It wasn't horrible. It, and she's like, maybe I should be telling people so that they understand that it's not a death sentence, that it's not something that's really bad, and that it's okay to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So it took some brave people to step out of the stigma of cancer. And I really hope that, that we can have the same thing, re- you know, relating to COVID and yes. influenza and whatever else comes up. Because... Being sick isn't anything to be ashamed of. And we, you know, although I think we, we have responsibilities towards ourselves and sometimes that can, if we don't face those and and embrace those, it can lead us to illness. But sometimes it's just a path that our soul is taking us on because we have another role to play. We have lessons to learn. So there shouldn't be any judgment about it and there shouldn't be any stigma. Yes, I totally agree with that. Um, I totally agree with that. And also, uh, I think it's the surroundings of of, um, how we grew up, because my parents and all their siblings, they never talked about an illness. Uh My my father never wanted to know that he didn't want his friends to know that he was suffering. Mm -hmm. And I I just really kind of picked up on that from my parents that you, you never talk, you never tell others that you're sick. Mm. And I'm like, that doesn't really serve me if I do that. So um, it was in, it was interesting, the influence that I had around me that caused me to not to not want to really talk about it. Mm-hmm. And today, it's really important that we talk about it, because the healing is at the emotional, physical and mental level. And sometimes we we uh, need others to help us expand our capacity to deal with the illness. Mm, absolutely. And the flip side of that is something that I faced in my family where people, you know, our, our family talked about the illness mm-hmm. within the family. Like it was such a big deal. I mean, you, you know, you got such attention if you were sick and, mm. you know, Oh, poor baby, or I'm feeling so terrible. I'm victimized by this terrible, you know, cold that came my way, whatever it was. And so when I first learned that I had the early stages of lymphoma, the one thing I didn't do for the first year was tell anybody in my immediate family because I knew that I would get attention from that. So there's got to be this, and I didn't want to like have a, an excuse to sort of keep it in my body, right? If, if I was getting all this attention, you know, this love and attention right. from my family, I didn't want to be 
getting something positive out of my illness besides my own personal growth. And so um, it's, it's a balancing act between yes. not wearing it on your sleeve, like poor me, poor me, I need something from everybody in the world because I've been victimized by this and being open and honest and communicative about it so that you can get the support you need and also everybody around you can, can grow, including yes. yourself. Yes. I totally agree with that. And it's, so, it's uh, one of the things that I teach in, in there is that is, is embrace your journey. Yeah. Because there's a lesson in there. And if you don't learn what the lesson is in your journey, just like you just said, there will be another circumstance that will, that will present itself so that you can learn the lesson you're meant to learn. Right. Yeah. And, and uh, one of the things I've learned is that if, if you ignore the lessons that, that your soul is trying to teach you, those lessons just get bigger and bigger and the, the consequences become larger and larger. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So what, what is it about our journey that is sacred? Cause you know, a lot of people are thinking right now I've been forced to be in my house. I've been, you know, fed a whole lot of fear on a daily basis in a variety of ways. Life isn't what it should be. Many people are facing relationship issues. Many people Mm -hmm. are facing the death of a loved one. Um, You know, people are struggling financially. What is it about this journey that can seem so lousy at times? What is it that makes it sacred? uh, For me, what makes it sacred is that, first of all, no one else is going no one else is on the same journey that you're, that you're on. So there's a uniqueness to the journey that we are all on. And it's a special journey unique to us. And if we embrace it as this is unique, I have, I'm on a special journey to learn and make an impact. Mm -hmm. And if I honor and respect the journey, then the, the goodness and the opportunities and the lessons will be more obvious to me when I embrace it and see it as something that I should honor versus mm. dismiss. Yeah. And that's really easy to do when it's minor things, but when it's something big, whether it's the end of a relationship, death of a loved one, a big health crisis, that's not easy to do. Mm-hmm. Do you have any recommendations for how we can approach the difficult times, respecting that it's a sacred journey um, so that we don't want to just like go and hide under the covers for right. uh, you know a year? Exactly. So I think, you know, we have two choices. Every time we have a, a situation, we, we're always at choice mm-hmm. as to whether we're going to play the victim of that particular journey or that illness or that uh-huh. catastrophe, whatever you call it, the crisis, or right. we're going to step in to our power. We're going to step into the power. And so what does it mean to be resilient and step into that power and take responsibility mm-hmm. is to really be totally present to the moment of whatever's happening moment to the moment, be present to the day and be present to the situation that has, um, has come to you and has unfolded in front of you mm-hmm. versus focusing on the past or focusing on the future. Yeah. So your ability to have that sense of resilience and empowerment comes to when you're in the moment and you're present with what's happening. Mm-hmm. And we have the capacity to ask or answers to guide us through the next step. So we are never alone in our process. We can count on our higher self, God, spirit, whatever is that, whatever that is for you is to make that connection and ask, you know, what's, what should I do today? You know, what is in my best interest to do today? And just be open to hearing the answer because we don't have to know the how of how we're going to come out of the circumstance. Mm -hmm. We just have to be open to hearing the message of how they're guiding us to the other end of the situation. So, so many times we spend, how am I going to get myself out of it? What am I going to do? We're so focused on the how that um, we forget about being in the experience and allowing 
our spirit to actually unfold the how for us. And if we mm. had that level of trust in ourselves and in spirit to tell us the how, mm-hmm. we, we would come out of that situation faster, yeah. wiser, smarter, right. uh, with more peace. And it's kind of a paradoxical situation because I think a lot of people um, s- make it conditional that they're, it, they'll be in the now if it's going to get them through faster as opposed to just being in the now. Um, because there's no promise that we're going to get to the other side. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have faith at this point that, right. that we do on, in one way or another, but we have to be in the not knowing that we're going to get through it, not knowing how we're going to get through it, mm-hmm. not knowing if we're going to get through it. Um, and that is really letting go into the moment. Yes, right? it is surrendering right? Yes. You are surrendering and you are being fully present to the moment because that's really all we have. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, but um, stay tuned for more here on the Christine Uptree Show. Did you know that all of the shows on the Transformation Radio Network are available as podcasts to stream or download? Really? Check us out. Go to transformationradio.fm. We have business shows, spiritual shows, energy healing shows, and pretty much everything in between. Something for everyone guaranteed to inspire, educate, and transform. We are transforming the world one listener at a time. Are you feeling the complexity of life? Do you feel that urge to step into something greater? Tune in to Nailed It Radio. Find your simplicity within your complexity with me, life coach, Carrie Nail. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com to discover what it means to use your full power to be the best version of yourself. Imagine stepping into the energy of saying yes to yourself and knowing you nailed it. For more information about me, visit CarrieNail.com. The vibration of change, that magical place where life shifts from struggle to ease, from stagnation to forward movement, from old ways of being to new ways of becoming. If you're like I am, it can be rather elusive to get there, but when you are in it, you feel it down to your very core, don't you? And it can positively affect everything in your life, from your relationships to your health and well-being, from your career path to your abundance. From the quality of that inner connection to the fullness of your self-expression. On the Christine Upchurch Show, we explore ways to get into that vibration of change with experts in the fields of consciousness, psychology, spirituality, health, healing, and science. Join me, Christine Upchurch, every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time on KKNW AM 1150 and Transformation Talk Radio and learn new ways to step into your vibration of change. I'm Peggy Snow with another Stellar Reflections Minute. Presence, or what we think of as being fully in the moment, is a key element in the process of healing work. As a practitioner facilitating a session, genuine presence takes us out of our heads where we tend to decide what is and maybe what should be for the client and moves us into direct experience where we're available to witness the person in their wholeness. In this receptive realm... Our senses are heightened and expanded, allowing us to perceive what's seeking to unfold and to interact in the moment. There's something profoundly powerful that happens when healing is approached in this simple, pure way. Balance can be restored and healing can take place on multiple levels. If you'd like more information about the services we offer at Stellar Reflections, visit us at StellarReflections.com or call 425-999-9836. That's 425-999. 999-9836. Welcome back to the Christine Upchurch Show here on 1150 AM KKNW, as well as TransformationTalkRadio.com. By the way, folks, if you're enjoying these shows, please get onto the Facebook page on, um, on my professional page and click like, and please check out my YouTube channel. I'm really enjoying my conversation today with the author of Catherine's Quest, Pat Oliva Crager, and she's talked about how we need to become leaders in our own lives and treat our journey as sacred. Now, Pat, I know that you do coaching in business, mm-hmm. and you, you specialize in coaching other women, correct? Yes, yes. So 
how do we make the leap from sacred journey of our life, which we often compartmentalize, mean, meaning personal life, to our business world? Right. So um, I fully believe in, in my coaching that um, life and business really are one. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you can't coach, and I don't coach women specifically on business without bringing aspects of their life into the mix. Because it's important to understand where they are in their life, the type of relationships, beliefs that they grew up with, uh, challenges that may be having in in their life, because they uh, they pour over into the business. Mm -hmm. So when I coach, life and business are intertwined, and so I coach them on both. And at the end of the day, the coaching and the success in, in their lives comes from going within and finding that they have the answers within themselves and then coaching them from the space and teaching them to live their life and their business, especially when it comes to their decisions from alignment, from connecting with their heart and making their decisions from that space. Mm -hmm. Uh, When they do that, then the trickle effect of of the techniques that I teach them, which are also in the book, Mm -hmm. uh, Catherine's Quest, one woman's journey to relation, which are about uh, principles and, and uh, exercises that allow you to connect with yourself and learn how to lead yourself through journaling, through living your life, through intention, huh. through unraveling your life. And you, there's no separation when you start embracing those techniques that mm. will make a difference in moving you forward. So if somebody is, is working in a job that they really don't care for, um, maybe even hate. Mm -hmm. How do they shift to a a business, you know, a career, uh, a way of earning money that is in alignment with who they are? Mm -hmm. It's a good question because 63% of people are not engaged in their lives that that currently work in corporate America. There's a lot of unhappiness in corporate America. 63%. 63% of totally disengaged wow. in their jobs. That's a Gallup poll that was taken in 2013. Wow. And, and I bet you anything, the number, the percentage is higher now. It's gone up. So yeah. we're not, a lot of us are not happy in our job. We just don't give ourselves permission to make a different choice. Mm-hmm. And so the, it's, it begins with, are you willing to give yourself permission to take a different route? you may have been trained in society of trained and socialization. Your parents said, when you graduate, you go to this job and you, you, you do this job forever mm-hmm. and you get to a point where that is not really me. Yeah. And so giving yourself permission to say, you know what? I am not happy here and I'm willing to take a risk to do what I truly love to do. Mm-hmm. And start establishing a pattern, a, 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 plan, a plan, if you will. So the, the question that I would have with, with my clients is, okay, what would be your ideal job? Mm-hmm. Tell me. If you could do, if money, resources, you, everything was available to you, what would you do? And then we dig into that. What would it feel like? What would it look like? Who would you be working with? What, you, what would you be doing? Yeah. What would your office look like? what would your working hours look like? And I, and I invite them to, to dig deeper into what their ideal job would look like. And once they're very clear on that, then, then we go to the next step and we say, okay, let's create, let's create a plan to get you to that ideal job or that ideal business. And, and if it's a business and it's slowly, then it's uh, stay in your job until we develop the plan and we start transitioning you slowly into your business. You're, you're, I don't invite anybody to jump from a, a corporate job or immediately into business. I say, let's, let's start working your business plan, your business um, structure. So that's slowly over time when you're ready and you're ready to leave your job, you already have a nice foundation for your business and you're already seeing some clients selling mm-hmm. product, whatever that is. So right. it becomes an easy way to make that transition. One of the things you just talked about in a variety of ways just now was about our belief systems. Mm -hmm. I think that often what happens with our belief systems is we, we get socialized, we get conditioned, we take on the 
prevailing beliefs of society. And then we think of it as truth. Yes. How do we let go of some of these perspectives that are keeping us jailed and imprisoned within our own minds, but we think it's within our life? You would, uh, I love um, uh, Byron Katie's work, which he talks uh-huh. about beliefs and how we ask our, as we bring that belief system up into our psyche and how, it, and how it's affecting our life and asking ourselves, is this belief true for me? Mm-hmm. Is it true for me? And right. is this belief helping me move forward? And if the belief is keeping you stuck, is keeping you in fear, then what would be the opposite of that belief? Mm. So if the belief is that there is, you know, there is um, that I'm not enough, which is a very common belief within women. Absolutely. I am not enough. There is no way that I can go for that promotion. There is no way that I can open a business because I'm not enough. Well, look at where that belief is, is where, look at where it's keeping you. In this one spot that you're unhappy. So what if you did have a belief that you were enough and that you had all the capacity to do whatever you wanted? What would that look like and what would it feel like for you? What if we start putting in affirmation and start taking actions that support that you are enough? What is one action that you can take? So they can start stepping in and validating for themselves that they actually have the capacity to do what they want and be successful at it. I, I think oftentimes um, it, it it's kind of like a new belief is like a big cold body of water that it'd be ideal if we could just dive in and see what it felt like to swim in it. But what we have to do is we have to put a, our big toe in first, right? And it's like, okay, so what does this feel like? It, and, and, and part of getting wet means leaving the shore of your previous life, uh, previous belief. Belief, yes. And, and, and so it, I think we do have to sort of try it on. Like, what if, you know, what if I'm just going to let go of that belief and, and think I'm worthy when I walk into this party? Or what if I think that I'm worthy of contacting that person to ask for some business support. Um, it's, it's the sort of thing where um, it doesn't usually happen in one big jump. I agree you with know, you. We don't, we don't jump in. We don't dive in usually. Although I do, I know, I know one person in particular who would just dive and I've got great respect for her, but most of us are the toe in the water kind of person. Uh, I totally agree that it is, um, it is a, um, step by step and you you spent so much time embracing that belief mm-hmm. that is going to take time for you to let go of that belief yeah. and i do like the what if questions you know what if what just take one baby step and then just build on that baby step and it, it becomes also a thing uh christina of awareness christina is of awareness is that when you when you want to take an action and all of a sudden that belief crawl you know raises its ugly head and says, what makes you think that you're enough, blah, 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 is to say, time out. Okay, there's that belief again. So Uh I get to choose right now as to whether I'm going to believe in that or whether I'm going to take a chance on myself Mm -hmm. and just go and just take that action. Right. Right. And I think that change starts with awareness totally. And I I think that the awareness is is key. What you're saying is key. And it's not just about the thoughts that go through our heads. It's, it's also about what we feel in our body too, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, if we, we're thinking about, say, contacting that person, that, that potential mentor for support, and if we're feeling the tightness in our solar plexus or feeling some tightness in our throat, then that's giving us a message that there is an underlying belief that may need to be explored. It could be it's, it's the wrong choice. There's a message like that. Yeah. But oftentimes the resistance it, we actually experience within our bodies and it is the physical aspect of the, the origin of that belief that's creating that resistance. Mm-hmm. I totally agree with that. Yeah. And I, I think about um, 
you're saying you're you were over nurturing others and not nurturing yourself and and that's you know and getting breast cancer that's that's just so indicative of how that belief system was stored in your body yes very yeah. much so. yeah and it's be and I you know I look I look back and I, now I have clarity on on understanding why this happened and I look back and I'm like oh well my mom was like that uh-huh. and my grandmother was like that yeah and my aunts were like that you know it, it was and my mom also had breast cancer and ovarian cancer oh my goodness so I I could go back and see the pattern and I'm like mm-hmm. so, so now my sisters and my my nieces it's like. I tell myself, how am I going to be the example right. of self-care so that they know that it's important in order to succeed in their life and to serve others is that they need to take care of themselves and fill their cup first yeah. before they can give to others. Yeah. And I think that's a really important point because um, I think oftentimes when you see something like that running in the family, the physical ailment, you, you know, people tend to think, oh, it's genetic. Well, there may be genetic predispositions, but as Bruce Lipton talks about, yes. there's got to be something environmental or internal that triggers that manifestation. So kudos to you to be sharing that with other women in your life so that they don't have to have that experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Before we go any further, I want to make sure our listeners and viewers know how to connect with you. What's your website? And can you tell us a little bit about what you offer? Yes. So my website is called MajesticCoachingGroup.com, as well as my Facebook page and uh, LinkedIn, MajesticCoachingGroup.com. And my my book is available there, as well as my um, journal. And it also comes with affirmation cards, which is available on my website under the Catherine's Quest tab. I love working with women and helping women re, um, and grow their business with ease and grace by connecting with who they are and, and working from this space. And I do it through VIP days, which is a four to five uh, hour immerse. Uh, experience on uh, a topic that's of interest. I -hmm. work in a group environment where I work with 12, 10 to 12 women at a time, and Uh I hold retreats. So you can learn all about uh, who I am and what I do by going to MajesticCoachingGroup.com. And I will be posting uh, three retreats coming up, one in May, one in September uh, in Dallas, Fort Worth. And then in April of 2022, I will be going to Sedona. So if you're a retreat retreat type kind of gal and you're into self-care and business retreats, then you want to get on my waiting list so that I can let you know. Yeah. And, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth, I, I, I happen to know personally that they've got the best Tex-Mex in the country. Yes. (laughs) So, and great Southern hospitality, which is, Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's a wonderful place too. I know that many people think of Sedona as the place to go, but it's, which is a wonderful place. Um, but, you know, the Dallas-Fort Worth area too has its its special aspects yes. as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and I, I love that you're doing retreats, like physical retreats. Mm-hmm. Um, I happen to be in a state that's just been so incredibly locked down. It's very frustrating. I have a lot of admiration for other states that are um, a little bit more hands off. Yeah, I know that some people think that's sacrilegious, but I tell you, um, the fear is toxic and I think we need to connect in person and I'm looking forward to being in, in group gatherings again. I'm looking forward to teaching in public as opposed to just like on zoom. Um, it's yeah, we, we need that. We definitely need need that. that. And women are, are talking to me about that. It's I'm a connector and I'm, you know, host a lot of events at my home and I get a lot, I get calls. And when are you, when are you having something in your house? You know, uh-huh. when are you, when are you going to bring us together again? And I, I just, I feel it and I hear it and I sense it. Yeah. Women yeah. need connection need right it. now. So what is it? I, I know you, you specialize in coaching women. What is it about women's challenges that differ from men's challenges from your perspective of course you know you are a woman so you 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 probably can't immerse yourself into a man's experience but from that higher level perspective how are we different uh, with women one of the challenges that i see a lot in women is they don't feel that they're enough 
Mm. Enough, not enough to even go to whether they're in corporates, because I coached women when I was in corporations and uh-huh. corporate America is that a job would become open and they would list the, you know, the skill sets that they need. And a woman and a woman would say, well, I have I don't have all those 10 skills, so I'm uh-huh. not enough to be able to apply. Right. And I'm not enough to be able to own my business. So the fact that we don't feel that we're enough is a major one. Yeah. Um Lack of uh, clarity yeah, of what we, what we want. So when, when, it's, when we work on clarity and then we work on the courage, there's a courage, then the, yeah. the confidence comes. And we say yes a lot. So we don't have boundaries. Mm-hmm. We don't have boundaries. And if we make boundaries, we, we, we don't honor them. Mm-hmm. And so we're doing a lot for other people. And mm-hmm. we're, we don't know how to say no. And we're not really living uh, aligned with our values because we don't have boundaries that we really stick to. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because um, the boundaries, I think, are, are a huge issue for women. Yes. Um, the overgiving, the not being able to say no. And one of the things that, you know, I, I'm sometimes teaching others is that it's a very spiritual thing to say no when it's appropriate. Um, I think that we, from a, a cultural perspective, we think that how we are defined, how, how we're viewed in terms of our, um, how loving we are, how spiritual we are, it somehow equates with how much we give. And some people may perceive that as financial, but I think women tend to perceive it in terms of giving of themselves directly. Mm-hmm. And it seems very appropriate to set boundaries. Uh, what are that some of the benefits that you perceived to setting boundaries yeah there's a lot of benefits to um setting boundaries first of all you teach people how to treat you Mm, first of all yeah oh so important so important it's so important to teach people how to treat you and that that comes through boundaries and there's um your self-esteem goes up when you start setting boundaries and honoring your boundaries Mm -hmm. so you teach people how to teach how to treat you Right. Your self-esteem goes up. You feel more confident. Once you start creating and sticking to boundaries, then you start creating more boundaries that align with your values and you start living a value-based life. Mm-hmm. And a value-based life equals your ideal life. Uh-huh. So in your own transformation, um, What happened once you started setting boundaries? It's really interesting. When you start setting boundaries, first of all, boundaries for me were a form of self-care. So I I had to uh, set boundaries in regards to the amount of time that I would spend in my business, um, how I take, took care of making time to take care of myself physically. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I noticed is not an, I became happier as a person because I started uh-huh. setting boundaries and honoring who I am as a person and honoring mm-hmm. my myself physically, mentally, and spiritually, which Mm -hmm. I talk a lot about those morning routines in the book, because it's important to have a routine that is embraced around self-care. So I talk a lot about that. And one of the things that that will, I'm sorry, one of the things that happens when you start setting boundaries is that it forces people to change. Mm -hmm. There will be some resistance that you need to be aware of and get and have to be ready to deal with. Mm-hmm. is that you're asking people to behave differently because of a boundary that you've set yeah. and the strength to be able to stand in your power and say, this is why this boundary is so important to me. So it just starts changing the quality of your life, your self-esteem and the way people treat you. And there's an and on and on. Yeah. It, it, it's also risky though, from my perspective, because if we are true to ourselves and set the boundaries that we need to, to, set in order to respect ourselves it can force us down a a a path of change and that can mean leaving a dysfunctional relationship leaving a a job that's um, making you unhappy how do you advise people to to deal with the fears that come up with the potential for significant change right so the, the 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 question is um it will require change. Mm-hmm. And um, what is it that you're afraid of? 
Mm-hmm. And let's get down <laughs> to what is it that you're really afraid of here? If you decide that you're only going to, that you're going to honor, you know, your business hours, for example, because women go into business for financial and time freedom so they can spend time with their families and and Mm -hmm. friends and do voluntary work and then they work you know 12 to 15 hours a day I said (laughs) so what's the point of going into business if you're not willing to honor the boundary in regards to your business hours Mm -hmm. well then you know Christine will get upset because I won't be answering her phone at night when she has a crisis Uh or you know I might be losing business because people aren't able to call me except for these hours and I'm like Okay, so you're afraid of losing business and you're afraid of uh, retaliation from your clients. Okay, so what's the worst that can happen? What if we just start slowly bringing in your hours? So you just don't automatically go from nine to six and people just, you know, uh, are in shock. Right. So let's let's start. How do, how comfortable would you feel if you went from, you know, instead of working twelve hours, let's start work, having you work to ten hours, and what would that mm-hmm. feel like? Mm-hmm. And let's start prioritizing things in your life, and know that, you know, change can be scary, but if you don't make those changes a year from now, where are you going to be? Right. What's the consequence of not taking that chance on yourself and setting that boundary and mm-hmm. making that change? Yeah. And it's it's hard to know this when you're going through a big change, if you haven't gone through a lot of, made choices to go through a lot of big changes. But one of the things I've learned is it's like a, a, a muscle that you exercise. Yeah. The more you do it, the easier it becomes because you've gotten through it. You've learned what you needed to learn. You've gotten to the other side and realized, oh, wow, this feels easier there's a a greater ease and flow in my life um and so it's it's kind of like you end up trusting more which is such an important part of choosing something new and 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 choosing to walk through change Mm -hmm. that is very true the trust trust is is is, it's key trusting yourself on your decisions uh trusting not only uh your analytical part of your mind, but also trusting your intuition, what your heart says. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, We've only got a couple minutes left, but the subtitle of your book is one woman's journey to elation. And I know that this is sort of a fable, but what is it about elation that you think that, that we should journey? Why, why should we journey towards that? Elation. Yeah. So many people ask me, so what does elation mean? And I'll start with that. I believe elation is just beyond happiness. And Uh I believe that we've all had an experience where we've been beyond happiness. Mm -hmm. It's when you're walking down the aisle, when you're first holding your first child, Uh uh, you take your dream vacation. You know, we have, we've had that level of happiness in our life and we can choose to have that in our life more and more and more. And it's just a choice. It's a choice today. I'm going to, I'm going to live from a state of elation. Why is it that I am so elated today yeah. and step into, into that, into that space? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I think that probably one of the most profound moments of my life was when I spontaneously thought it's going to snow. I'm going to get an extra loaf of bread and feed it to the pigeons. And, you know, they, it, it was just this, amazing connection with these birds in a parking lot you know and we can have moments like that it doesn't have to be something as big as holding your first child you know exactly holding a baby yeah 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 i love that i love that yeah so again mention your website please it's majesticcoachinggroup.com and this is pet alba creaker author of Catherine's quest when woman's journey to elation (laughs) pat um I'm very grateful you joined us here today, and apparently so is my cat, Indy. <laughs> Thank you for, for being on the show and, and offering your time and your wisdom with our audience. Thank you, Christine. I appreciate the opportunity. Your show is amazing. I would invite people to go to your YouTube. I was there yesterday, and today you have amazing speakers come in with really profound messages. Oh, thank you. And I want to thank all of our viewers and listeners for joining us here today. Um, We do this show for you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. 
Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you'd like to empower yourself to step further into your vibration of change, please visit my website at christineupchurch.com where you can learn more about my insights, upcoming events, and private sessions. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.